What's going on, everybody? Welcome on into today's video. We are talking about the volume profile indicator. We're going to be going over what this actually is, how to use it, and how you can set this up on your own charts right now. So right now we're looking at Netflix. We're going to keep this video as short and sweet as possible as where you can get in and get out with what you need. And what you're noticing here is that on the bottom of our screen, we have our traditional volume indicator that you'll see down here by the reds and greens. And then over on the right hand side, these white lines are, that's your volume profile. So if I zoom out to let's say the one year chart on Netflix and I zoom ourselves out a little bit more, you're going to start to see that some of these gaps get filled in and we're going to notice some of these volume lines, right? Really extending out. So we're going to kind of cover what you need to know, how to set this up, and then how you can use this to potentially build out trading plans off of some of these levels. And as always, if you get anything out of the video, consider subscribing, the thumbs up button. We got plenty other videos and playlists where that came from. If you have any other questions about the platforms we use, other indicators, candlesticks, all that good stuff, and a lot more, there probably already is a good video to jump over to on our playlist tab or already on the channel. Okay, so let's dive in. We're looking at Netflix right here. You can use any stock, but what I want to do is I want to go up to the indicator section and I want to show you what we have. So we're looking for a volume profile. So if I was to type in volume profile on my indicator list right here, you may or may not see that depending upon the platform you're using. We are using TradingView here in this video. You can sign up for a free account or even a 30 day free trial for TradingView. I recently just upgraded to the best of the best that you can get uh, the most expensive, which in my view, isn't really that bad if you're going to utilize utilizes a lot and it's useful in your own trading, investing, and whatever you do, that link will be in the video description box down below for you to check out if you are interested uh, and you don't have access to it on your platform. TradingView will definitely give you access. So there's kind of a lot you can choose from and there's a couple that you can go off of, okay? So we have session volume profile, the HD, the periodic, the fixed range, or the visible range. The one that we're using here is the visible range, also known as VRVP, okay? So what that's just gonna do is when I view a chart, it's going to update the volume profile on the right-hand side to whatever time frame I'm looking at, okay? That's all it is. Now, fixed range, I'll set the range so you can kind of go through each one individually. However, we're gonna be talking about the visible range they're all fairly similar and it kind of works right in how you would think it works. Visibly, what's on the screen? What's the time frame I have selected? Okay, give me the volume profile for that time frame, and here we are. Okay, so now if I was to pull this up and I was to actually jump over into my visible range volume profile, well, I can go over to the settings and I now have the ability to change up what I want to change up from the settings right here. So let's just jump through what my current settings are. You can mess around and customize this. I'll kind of briefly dive into why I have some of the things I have. And it depends really on what you're looking at and what fits you best. Some people like having a lot of little profiles or a couple big ones. It depends on if you're more of an investor or are you more of a day trader? Like, what are you, right? If, if you are more of a day trader, you want to make sure you have a lot of levels shown up and you might want to be more detailed in what you're viewing, right? So I currently have it in ticks per row. If I were to change this to number of rows, you'll notice that, see how we have a lot bigger bars. I have it to ticks per row, okay? Ticks per row is where I currently have it set to. I've got my row size set to 20. I have volume up and down. Um, you could go with just total. You can change different colors for that. Honestly, total volume is all I care about. So I'm gonna actually just gonna update that right there. Uh, and then I go to value area volume of 100. If I was to change this, and let's just start moving this down to let's say 95. Let's just actually say I went to go to 50. Notice on the right-hand side of our screen here, you're gonna see that it kind of condenses um, the highlighted area in white into kind of a smaller range. I like 100, I'm gonna leave it at 100. That works best for me. So we're gonna cover the entirety of the volume profile here. Uh, if I go to style, here's where things can get a little bit complicated, but to be honest, it doesn't have to be. Um, I have it set to volume profile checked. Um, I don't have values. I don't really care to do that. I'm going to leave it unchecked. Um, with the box, I have it at 20. Placement to the right, I could make it on the left-hand side. Boom, now see it's on the left. Maybe you want it on the left. I like it on the right. That's just my style. Um, see the volume up, volume down? If, if I was to essentially go back to the inputs and go to 
up and down volume, that's where I would be able to change those. But in this case, I don't need to because I just am looking at total volume here. And then POC is volume point of control. Uh, that is essentially the point where, or the price level that we have had the most volume exchanged on whatever time frame we are looking at. That is what POC means. I have that set to a red line. So notice that red line across the middle of our screen, boom. Right, that goes into the right right here on the right-hand side here at 363.70. Boom, that's our point of control. Label on price scale, uh, boom. So that's why my indicators or my volume point of control pops up on the price scale. You don't need to have it, but I like to have it up there. And then values in the status line, not really a huge deal there at all. The visibility, um, I have it set to pretty much any range on the chart. That's just me. Uh, maybe you don't like looking at this on very short time frames, so I'm gonna get rid of it on the minutes, on the seconds and the hours, and I only want it on daily charts or beyond, but for me, uh, what well, I'll show you kind of what that means. I click okay. Let's say I go to the five day chart. Uh, we're looking at a much more condensed chart right now. Now you can see the volume profile still pops up, but if I was to eliminate that on shorter time frames, it wouldn't pop up on a you know a chart that I dive into, let's say like a five day chart, okay? So that's the use case for it right there. That's essentially how you set it up, or at least my settings. You can of course change it to however you see fit and what works best for you. And that's just kind of a basic understanding of it. But now let's dive into utilizing this and uh, what it all means. Like, okay, how do I use it? Now, it's definitely an indicator to help you. Does it mean that a stock must respect this perfectly? No, absolutely not, right? But right now we are looking at Netflix chart over the past year. Right, And more specifically, Netflix has taken a pretty big tumble over the past, I don't know, six to eight months. So what we have right now is some gaps. So notice the gap right here off of earnings report, another gap right here off earnings report. And what those gaps tell us or, or show us is that on the right-hand side, there's no volume here, right? Look at the volume, there's no volume here. Because they're literally on this time frame, there literally is no volume traded at that period. Now, why it's important is because we can utilize that in our own trading when stocks start to make a push up into or beyond a resistance point and we're like, oh, where can it go? How far can it go? We can utilize some of these volume profiles to get a feel for where the next volume node, as we say, may be. You can have low volume nodes or you can have high volume nodes. Essentially, lower volume nodes would be where there's lesser volume. Higher volume nodes would be where we see more than, let's say, the average volume. So uh, we have the point of control down here on the red, which means a lot of volume has been exchanged right here at that price point, just under 200 bucks. Uh, but the next higher volume node could be seen up towards this area right here. So that means if Netflix really gets going and starts to push up, push up, push up through this lower volume node right here into this gap right here, as it starts to get up to that higher volume node, it may start to find this to be an area of resistance and it's coming up from below, okay? So we can utilize these as areas of support resistance, okay, on a chart. And really it could be for any time frame, right? This could be on the one minute chart if you wanted to, right? If it looks very, very similar, it's very possible um, that you have something that kind of looks similar to this. Maybe you have more, more of the fill in on, the, on some of these areas, but there are certain spots where a stock will get up to and really trade, 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 and then come back down or break through, but it will trade at a certain spot for a long time. A lot of volume exchange right there, a lot of orders going through. That's an area of, in, that's a point of interest at least as a trader or an investor, it's a point of interest saying, hey, a lot of volume was exchanged there. It was a resistance for so long. It eventually broke through with some buying volume or it didn't break through. It got rejected right there. That's something that I want to know and I can use that to trade off of in the future, okay? So that's one thing to watch or really, I guess if I zoom this back in on Netflix, I mean, really if I zoom ourselves in a little bit here, what's more important in the short term, let me zoom us down so you can kind of see what I mean. Honestly, it's going to be this, this, this is going to be your first volume node right here. You have the, obviously the, the volume point of control we're looking at right now, but your next, you know, higher volume node is actually right here. So if Netflix gets going, gets up over 200 bucks, it's going to have a higher volume node here at like 215 all the way up to about 225. So that could be your area now to watch as an area of resistance. So how do we trade off of that? Well, if Netflix gets going and let's say it breaks over, let's say the 250 area, well, now, what do you know? Well, well, now we know, hey, there hasn't been much volume traded here. We might not have very much resistance based on that volume profile, based on the chart. There might not be very much resistance right here. Align that up with a gap to fill on the chart. 
This could be a really good long trade if Netflix continues to hold up over this 250, or let's just say it holds up over this 225 higher volume node right here. It pulls back to here and then goes. That could be a really good trade, and a target could be up here towards around this 330 area before we start seeing some higher volume nodes, relatively speaking, up above that 330 towards that 350 plus level on Netflix. So, that's how we utilize the volume profile here in a nutshell. If you want more videos on this, we can totally dive deeper into it in the future. But in a nutshell, that's what you need to know. And that's really, those are some of the biggest uses that you can utilize this for. We like to use it a lot and, and pair this up with other areas of support resistance. Um, so, you know, when you're looking at a chart and you're like, hey, okay, I charted out, hey, a lot of the stock's been bouncing at this spot a lot of times. Well, there's a good chance that also there's a lot of volume trading in that area as well. You pair it up and you can build a nice trading plan saying, hey, if we break over this level and we hold above this level, my target is now this level. And so it's a great way to back your way into trades, look at the bigger picture, get a really big picture view of what, what Netflix is doing, and then zoom yourself into shorter time frames and start to kind of build out your trading plans on those shorter time frames after looking at the big picture, let's say volume profiles on the one year, one day chart. I think it's a really good strategy to utilize. We'll leave any links, resources down below, a webinar covering three trading signals to add to your arsenal, that link to get signed up for a free trial of TradingView. Uh, I highly, highly recommend it. It's a great, great resource for you, especially if you want to take your, take your game up a little bit more in terms of your active trading or investing. Highly would recommend that. And again, we have a ton of playlists, ton of videos here on the channel. Check them out. They are 100% free. Also, it's free to subscribe. It's free to the thumbs up button. If you got any value, share it with a friend, and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.